today we're going to talk about section 7.2. Section 7.2 deals with the plasma membrane. All right, we looked at this cell over here, and we said the plasma membrane was what surrounds the cell. And we're going to look at it in some more detail than we've looked at it before. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, inside this section, first we're going to talk about maintaining a balance. Okay, that's very important when we're talking about the plasma membrane. Then we're going to talk about the, what the plasma membrane is. We're going to talk about the structure of the plasma membrane. And that is the content that we're going to deal with today. We're going to talk about maintaining a balance first. Um, plasma membrane is a boundary between the cell and its environment. If we didn't have a plasma membrane, there would be no overall structure, and the stuff that's inside would not be separated from the stuff that's outside. And we don't like that. We don't want that. Why do we have a plasma membrane? One of the main reasons is you want to let the good stuff in, and you want to keep the bad stuff out and send the bad stuff out. So good stuff would be things like nutrients. Bad stuff would be things like waste. You want the good in, and you want the bad out. The plasma membrane, the plasma membrane maintains homeostasis. Anybody remember what homeostasis is? Anybody remember what homeostasis was? We spoke about it once in the past. A consistent environment, right? You want things to be, basically you want it to be in balance. You want the right things inside, you want the wrong things to be outside, and that's the way it is. You can compare the plasma membrane to the walls of your house. You have a house, or well, hopefully you have a house or an apartment or something of that. Well, you don't have one. Your parents have one. And you live in a house. You have one? Man, you, you're set. If you have a house already, sweet. I wish I had a house when I was your age. Anyhow, so plasma membrane keeps the good things out in, the bad things out. You have your house. You have walls, hopefully. There are certain people you don't want to come inside your house, right? Yeah. Like Mr. Samuel, right? I know, I understand. <laughs> All right, certain people you don't want in, certain people you do want in. How do you regulate that? You close the door. You lock the door. You say, you know what, I don't want you in my house. I'm going to close my door. You see Mr. Samuel coming up to the door. You're like, oh, no, it's Mr. Samuel. You shut the door, right? Hide and turn off all your lights. You sound like you've done this before. <laughs> no, you would never do that, right? All right, regardless of how you choose to do it, you have your walls in your house, you have the doors, you have the windows, and you can regulate what comes in, you can regulate what goes out. If Mr. Samuel comes in your house and he's giving you a headache, you just kick him out, right? Good, good answer, I like that. Oh, okay, okay, got you. All right, so that, that is kind of what the plasma membrane does for us. It helps us to regulate what comes in and what does not come in. In. All right, so the first thing is it maintains homeostasis. Next is what we call selective permeability. In other words, it allows some molecules into the cell and keeps some out. What does permeable mean? If something is permeable, what does that mean? Some stuff can go through it, right? What does selective mean? Okay, only certain things. You're picky and choosy as to what you let into the cell. Do you want any and anything to get into the cell? No. Obviously not. So the membrane is selectively permeable in that way. Some molecules can cross across, the, can cross across, <laughs> cross across. Some molecules can cross the plasma membrane. For example, water can get into the cell easily. It can get out of the cell easily. And then others that are bigger than water, for example, or not specific to, not, not able to just pass across the membrane, they can go through channels. And that's like your doors, right? That's your doors. You, you want people to come in, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, people can't just walk through your walls. I mean, that would be kind of cool if you could walk through walls, but. All right. Uh, let's talk about the structure of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is composed of what we call a phospholipid bilayer. What is a lipid again? Fat. Fats and oils. And we spoke about the structure of um, the, the lipids, and we spoke about that lipids are normally one molecule of glycerol attached to three, three what? Do you guys remember? Fatty acids, correct. But the phospholipid 
is a little different in that it's a lipid with a phosphate group attached. So instead of three fatty acids, you have two fatty acids, and you can see that here. And here we have a phosphate group that's attached. So it only has two fatty acid tails, and it forms kind of like a sandwich. So you have one layer at the top, one layer at the bottom, and the phosphate groups forms these polar heads. What does polar mean again? Okay, water was polar, polar, and it had some of those features. Um, now, does it mix with water or not? No. no. Polar. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Polar mixes with water. Non-polar mixes with. Th does not mix with water. Good job. It mixes with non-water. All right. So, is oil polar or non-polar? Non-polar. Is salt polar or non-polar? Salt. So what is it? Okay, so salt is polar, right? Next question. Does soap mix with oil? No. And dirt and that type of stuff? No. So you guys ask the question, which one of you are right? Both of you are. Soap. Soap is kind of like, like a, not a phospholipid, but it's kind of like it in that it has a polar part and it has a non-polar part, which is good, right? Because you want it to mix with water and you also want it to mix with dirt and oil and all that stuff, right? So that when you take a shower, you get rid of all the dirt and the oil and all that stuff. Does that make sense? Isn't like soap, doesn't soap have like fat? It has oil in it. Well, it depends on the type of soap. I don't know about that. But yes, that, that is true. Some of it, some of it does, is made out of that. Some of it is made out of different things. And All right, so we have a phosphate group forming a polar head, which is what we see here. And then we have the fatty acids and the, the fatty acid tails forming the nonpolar tails in the center, which is good, right? Because is there water inside the cell? Yes. Is there water outside the cell? Yes, there's water all around the cell, water in the cell, so you want the polar heads to be on the outer ends so that it can be exposed to the water on both sides. Let's talk a little more about the structure of the membrane, and what we're going to talk about is called the fluid mosaic model. What does fluid mean? Like liquid. liquid, right? It flows. What does mosaic mean? What kind of a picture? It's like a mixture. It's like a but it, those pictures where you have like a bunch of smaller pieces that come together, right? Um, to form something, to form a large picture. Yeah, like a puzzle. Not not really like a puzzle, but kind of. But it's it's not in any specific way that you could put one piece with another. But it, you take individual things, put them together, and you form a bigger thingy. Except for, if you're thinking about a, a mosaic picture, it's usually a bunch of smaller so like pictures. Oh, yeah, and, that, and that's, and that, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? So that's the type of, that's a concept we're dealing with when we're dealing with mosaic. You have a bunch of little particles that come together to form a br bigger overall picture. So let's talk about the fluid mosaic model and why we use this model to describe the, the plasma membrane. The membrane is fluid. Why is it fluid? Because we have phospholipids, and they kind of move around in the membrane like, a, uh, like the water in a lake. It does not stay. Each phospholipid does not stay in one particular position. It actually flows around the cell throughout the plasma membrane. So it's very fluid where that's concerned. On the other hand, it's also considered to be mosaic because we have a bunch of proteins in the membrane that also move. So you have a bunch of individual proteins and proteins that come together and so on that are all throughout the plasma membrane. So we have the phospholipids and we have the proteins and this is why we call it the fluid mosaic model. So what other things do we find in the plasma membrane? There are a few other things that we're going to talk about. Number one, we have cholesterol. Cholesterol is found in the plasma membrane. Do we need cholesterol? Yes, yes we do. 
but if we have too much, we can have some problems, right? Um, cholesterol, this is what cholesterol does when it comes to the plasma membrane. It helps to stabilize the plasma membrane and prevents the phospholipids from sticking together. So they are all throughout the plasma membrane and it helps to make, keep it stable and keep the phospholipids from sticking together. Okay. Now what happens if you have too much cholesterol? You okay, it's, it could block your arteries. Um, and one of the reasons why is because cholesterol helps to stabilize the membrane. If you have too much, what's going to happen to the membrane? Okay, the it, stuff is going to get too hard, too rigid, and then that can lead, lead to some problems. You eat Cheerios according to the commercial, right? Let's now talk about transport proteins. Those are proteins that span the entire membrane and form channels for specific molecules to enter and leave. So that's like the door. We have these channels that go through that if certain molecules want to come in, like if sodium wants to come in, um, potassium, chloride, and a number of other things, they want to come in, they have to go through these transport proteins. And then let's talk about some other proteins and carbohydrates that are on the external surface. And we're going to look at a picture of this in the next slide. But we have these proteins and carbohydrates that are on the external surface that helps with identification. It helps the body know what type of cells are in a specific location. All right, the immune response, for example, has to do with this so that it can identify the cells that it needs to identify and do what it needs to do. And we're going to talk a little more about that in a later chapter. And then we have proteins on the inside surface, on the internal surface, that provide flexibility by attaching the plasma membrane to the cell's internal structure. So these are some other components that we have in the plasma membrane. And here we can see, looking at the plasma membrane, uh, here's extracellular fluid. What does that mean, extracellular? What does that mean? More. Not because this, this is extracellular and this is intracellular. So what would, okay, so extracellular means outside of the cell. This is the plasma membrane. And inside here we have the cytoplasm. Here we have a transport protein and stuff can go through it. We have some proteins and carbohydrates on the outside surface. And what does that help with again? Anybody remember in the previous slide? The, the, the carbohydrates and proteins on the outside, what does that help with? Oh, transport. No, that was the transport proteins. No, that's, what, what does that? What, what, what stops the phospholipids from sticking together? Cholesterol. cholesterol, okay. And here we have the cholesterol here. And the, the other proteins and carbohydrates on the outside, what did those do again? No? It's in your handout. The other proteins and carbohydrates on the external surface. Nope. What was it? It's right there in your handout. Helps with identification. So remember that the other proteins and carbohydrates on the external surface help with identification. Then we have proteins on identification so that you can know what type of cell it is, so that your body can know what type of cell um, certain other cells are coming in contact with. And that's also a way that your body can determine when there's a foreign substance inside your body because when it goes and it sees these foreign IDs, then it knows that it needs to do something, it needs to attack those cells. So in review, inside review, in review, uh, we've looked at maintaining a balance. We looked at the plasma membrane. The structure of the plasma membrane was the last thing we spoke about. We spoke about the fluid mosaic model within that. That is the end of this section.